Welcome everyone. Thank you for joining us for today's webinar where we take you through Signy Flow so you can unlock its full functionality. My name is Lizette van Hoogrenberg and I'm the Head of Customer Support Relations at Signy Flow. Today, Signy Flow Solutions expert Danny Haramse will be taking you through the basics of setting up workflows and signing in Signy Flow. She'll also point out some hidden gems you may not have noticed before, but that will make your life even easier. Okay, now without further ado, time to hand over to your resident ninja, Danny. Thank you, Lizette. I appreciate the introduction. It's great speaking to all of you today. Um, so I'm just quickly going to share my screen. Um, so once you've logged into Signy Flow, uh, you'll be greeted with the Signy Flow dashboard. The dashboard shows you the workflow status of your documents. The very first task that we have here is pending, and pending, pending contains all documents awaiting an action from you. Now, that is whether you are signing a document or approving a document. In circulating, we have every document that you have created for other people to action. Cancelled will be any document that you have cancelled either from your circulating basket or from the Create New Workflow page. Expired will be a workflow that has been set to expire on a specific date and that date has passed. So you can find that document in your expired basket. Rejected will be any document that you have created and either you or one of your workflow users has rejected the document. And completed will be all circulating documents that has been actioned. So you can find them inside of your completed basket. In drafts, we have um, documents that actually did not get to the point of being released. So if you were interrupted either by an outage um, or accidentally closed your browser, you can then continue with your workflow from drafts. In Shared With Me will be all documents sent to you via SignaFlow from someone else. Now that is whether you are a viewer, signer or approver. Portfolios is the secure document collection tool being one of SignaFlow's biggest differentiators. We have incorporated the same technologies into portfolios that you would use to digitize proce uh, processes in multiple departments. But we will have a more in-depth webinar on portfolios in November. Deleted will be all of the documents that you have deleted from your dashboard, dashboard so anything that you have created and we don't actually keep the documents, but we do keep the order trail for you. Total is a non-clickable basket, and this just shows you the amount of workflows you have used up until this point. And available is also a non-clickable basket, and it shows you the available amount of workflows that you can use. Now to create a new workflow, you will be able to click on the green Create New Workflow button at the top of your dashboard or this button over here, but these two buttons just take you to exactly the same thing. Here you will have a choice between um, using a document template or uploading a document from your C drive or any linked network drives. And then also you have the option of using a document template. And these are documents that are used often. The business administrator will use um, these templates in SignaFlow or we'll create these templates in SignaFlow, and we will have a more in-depth webinar on the document templates at a later stage. When uploading or importing your document, it's important to note that SignaFlow accepts most file formats as listed here. So PDF, TXT, XML, XDS, Word, Excel, PowerPoint, code, or image files. Um, and a document, any document that gets uploaded to SignaFlow will be converted to PDF for compliance purposes, as you guys will now see shortly. So here the system is just converting the document for us. Once the document has been uploaded onto the system, you'll be met with the document information screen. Um, and this will basically just be showing you some advanced options we have on the workflow engine. But if you do not want to set any advanced options, if they're not required, you can simply click on proceed. If you do want to set any advanced options, here's the options that we have available. So you can cancel your workflow from here. 
we can preview the very first page of the document that we have uploaded. You can rename your document should that be required. You can replace the document should you notice you've uploaded the incorrect documents. You can split up the pages. So if you do have a multi-page uh, multi document, you can split up the pages into individual workflows. You will be able to start a new portfolio from here or link this workflow to any existing portfolio. Then you can set out priorities. Now priorities do relate to email priorities. So what email priority you want your client or signer to receive the signing email notification. You can set a due date. So by when does this document need to be signed, which will also be mentioned in the email notification. If you do want the document to auto expire, your due date will then automatically serve as your expiry date. And then also we can send out automated reminders. Now these automated reminders will be sent out once a day, each and every day, until the user has act uh, completed their action on the document. Then we have metadata types. So we also work with metadata types. Um, so you can use our Dockflow interface, which ships freely with Signiflow, but we will have a more in-depth webinar on Dockflow at a later stage. Then you can set whether you want to send your email. So first of all, you can set it to send all. So everybody in the workflow receives an email. You can skip all, meaning nobody in the workflow receives an email, or you can only skip the first action taker. Now this is specifically for when you are the very first sign in a workflow, you do not need to receive this email. And then also you can select what needs to happen to this document once it's been completed. Now you can either just leave it in Signiflow as is, or you can store it in Signiflow and also email a completed copy to any internal or external user that is not part of this workflow. Then we have a custom message. Now a custom message can either be a brand new message you would like to type out, or you can select, um, or you can ask your business administrator to set up a custom message for you and you can simply just select your custom message and click on proceed. Next, we'll be adding your recipients to your workflow. Now, the very first button we have here is add yourself. Now, when adding yourself, your details will be pre-populated by the system. Here, we will also then be able to stipulate what type of action you yourself need to take onto a document, whether you are allowed to um, nominate someone else to sign on your behalf, do you also want to receive the completed notification? What type of signature is required, whether it's digital or electronic, which will also have a more in-depth webinar on at a later stage, and whether you'd like to use the Signiflow face sign functionality, which is available in 2D or 3D. Now, please remember that it is not required for you to be added onto a workflow in order for you to workflow documents. The next functionality we have here is add signer. Now add signer is for either internal or external users and what we require from a signer to be added onto a document or onto a workflow is a first name, a last name, email address, as well as a mobile number. Uh, the next one we have here is add group. Now group signing is what we call a parallel uh, workflow. Um, and what makes our parallel workflow unique to any other workflow solution on the market is the fact that you can add the group functionality as well as specify how many users you'd like to have action. Also need to remember that this is first come first serve, meaning if you have, let's say a board of directors document sitting with five directors, but we only require three directors signature on the document, you can then stipulate that onto the ad group functionality. Then we have add face-to-face. Face-to-face signers can be used in any circumstances where you or your employees will have to sit face-to-face -face with a signer to sign a document or contract on the same device. We also call this in-witness signing and we will have a more in-depth webinar on these functionalities at a later stage. Next is adding your approver to your workflow. 
Now, the approver is allowed to either approve or reject the workflow. This functionality is usually used for someone that needs to check the document before it goes out for signing. And then lastly, we have the viewer. Now, the viewer is very closely compared to someone that has been CC'd into an email, just because of the fact they can view and track the document from their end at any point in time. They do not have to wait out the system. Now, for the work I'm creating today, I'm going to add a group of approvers. I'm going to put it approvers. I'm going to say I require one approver. I'm going to set the functionality to approve document, and I'm going to click on next. Now, one of the approvers is going to be myself, and the other approver will then be one of our other accounts. I'm going to click on add user, and thereafter click on add user. Next, I would like to add two signers to my workflow. So one sign I'm going to add here is what we call is Joan. And the next sign I can also then be Ben. From there, we can then continue to go into Doc Prepper. Now, Doc Prepper is where we actually prepare fields onto our document for our users to fill out. We also have dynamic templating uh, through auto tagging, and we'll have a more in depth webinar on these functionalities at a later stage. Um, for now, we will be able to add fields manually onto the document, and I will then also just briefly go through what a doc prepper template is. Now, for each signer, we have a little tab here that you can click on, and as soon as you click on the signer, the fields will become available. The fields that we have for each signer is a signature field, which you can just click on, click and drag it to where you need it, resize it according to the document um, requirements and click to affix once you're happy with the size and placing of the signature. We also have an amazing function, which is our initial field. Now, especially if you work with a lot of contracts and a lot of pages, this will be a fantastic time saver because as soon as I release the initial field, going to ask me, do you want to add all fields to all pages? And as soon as I say yes, the system will automatically add initial placeholders to all of the pages in my documents. Next set of fields that we have is form field placing. Now, this is our client's fillable fields. These are fields that they can physically type in or select from. And the very first field we have here is a mandatory text field. Now, this field will require the signer to fill it out before they will be able to actually sign the document. This is just to prevent our signers from missing any very important fields. The next field we have here is a non-mandatory open text field, which is also our optional field. This field will not force your signer to fill it in. They will be able to proceed with signing without actually filling something into the system. Then we have a checkbox field. I do like to call this our optional checkbox field because the signer will not be forced to fill it in or to check it before they sign the document. But if you are looking for something a little bit more mandatory, I would suggest using our checkbox group. Now, as soon as I click on checkbox group, I will receive a pop-up stating that you're about to... Um, okay, so basically what this says is any checkbox you're about to place will form part of this group. If you click on OK, um, we can then add checkboxes to where we want to. The scenario here will be answering either a yes or no question, and we want to make this mandatory. So I'm going to add a checkbox underneath each option that we have. So one under yes, one under no. And as soon as I click on save checkbox group, I'm going to say to the system that the minimum amount of checkboxes that needs to be checked will be one. That's just because I want to make this field mandatory. The maximum amount of checkboxes that needs to be checked will also be one because I want to limit my signer to provide me with either a yes or no answer. The next field we have in the set will be a drop down field. This is also a mandatory field and it's great if you want to give your signer some options. So you can click and drag it. You can also resize this field according to the document specifications. And once you click to affix, you are required to add values to your drop down. Now, these are the options that your users are going to choose from. 
So I have option one here. Every time I'd like to add a new option, I just click on this little blue plus over here. And then once again, so we did not limit you to the amount of values you can have um, on your drop down, but as soon as you're done, you can just click on save. For the next set of fields is our set user info fields. Now these are fields that will be automatically populated by the system. Um, the first field we have here is a name field. So I'll just add Joan's name onto my document. So that's for name and surname, the date field you can add onto the documents as well. Now, please remember, this is not really a date picker, but this does automatically pick up dates of signature phase. If you do want to format your date, so to have a specific date format, we do have those options available here as well. And then obviously, if you guys do want to do a custom date format, you can set it up yourself. The next field we have here is an email address field. So if you do require your signer's email address on the document, you can simply place the email address field and it will automatically populate your signer's email address as well as mobile number. And then we have a last field here that we call our designation field. So we will show you in a later stage in a webinar how to set up your designation onto your um, profile. So it does automatically populate every time you sign a document and that is required. Um, the next field we have here is our ad hoc face-to-face -face field. These we will have a more in-depth webinar on at a later stage. And then we have lastly our business field. Now this just allows you to upload a company stamp. Um, for Benny, I'm just going to select him as I just need his signature, name, and surname on this document. So I'm just going to place these fields for him. Uh, Lizette, before we continue, is there any questions from the audience? No questions yet. So from here, I'm going to then just release my document. And now just to very quickly mention, even though we are going to have a more in-depth webinar on this at a later stage, is our doc prepper templates, which is also a massive time saver. And basically what that does is you're only required to set up a document once. And from there on out, you can then just overlay these fields onto your document and then just reuse them as you go. I'm going to release this document. And because I am an approver on this document and logged in with the approver's account, um, the system will actually redirect me into EasySign, which is SigniFlow's signing interface. So I can review the document and then either approve or reject the document, um, depending on the outcome. Now, very first here, I can see that I'm an approver and it's just telling me that my signature is not needed. I just need to either approve or reject. The custom message will be available to everyone in your workflow. And you can then proceed. I can then review the document and see if I'm happy with everything. And from here, I can then choose to reject the document. Just remember, if you are rejecting, you will have to reject with reason. Or approve the document, which you can also approve with reason. I can click on submit. And once the document approval has been completed, the system will then automatically send the first signing email to Joan. Now, while we wait for Joan to receive her signing email, I'd just quickly like to show you what it looks like and how you can track your document. So from the circulating basket, we can then see our signing here to be is Joan. Um, if I click on this little green plus over here, it does expand into an audit trail which then actually shows me um, what actions has been completed and what actions are we still waiting for. If you do know that there's a document that is waiting on your attention inside of SignaFlow, I'll just quickly share the screen with you. Um, if you do know there's a document that is waiting for your attention in SignaFlow, you do know there's a document on its way and your emails might be a little bit slow, similar to what mine is today. You then also have the opportunity to actually log into SignaFlow with your user credentials. So username and password, you can simply click on log in. 
but that's just verifying with the system you are using the correct credentials. You can then find that document within the pending box or pending basket. You can also see who the requester of this document is, what the date requested is, and the document name. From there, you can click on open, and that will then also take you into our EasySign signing interface. There we go. Now, because Joan is a first time signer, um, you can see here she's met with instructions. So it's just any open mandatory text fields that are indicated in red, any initial fields will have to be filled out before she will be allowed to sign the document. She can simply click on OK, read through the custom message, and click on this little green proceed checkbox. Now, already here we can see there's multiple fields here. Um, some are red, some are blue. All of the red fields is mandatory. And the blue fields are optional. But should Joan accidentally miss the initial fields as well as these red fields over here and try and sign the document, the system will warn her that there are outstanding fields on these specific pages and we will need to fill it out before we can proceed with signing. So I'm going to click on the initial block for Joan. Joan can then use a QR code if she wants to, um, to actually scan on her phone and upload her initial by joining it out with Bing on Blast. I will show you guys how that works once we are at the signature. The next option that Joan has is she can actually upload an image of her initial, or she can simply draw it out with her mouse on her computer. And as you guys can see, we do have some smoothing technology built in just to not make it look so rigid. <laughs> so I'm going to click on save initial. Joan is then met with two options. She can either manually apply initial by clicking on each individual initial block, or she can choose to automatically apply her initial, which will then automatically apply her initial wherever it has been requested. Once the initial has been applied, as you can see here on page one and page two, the fields that will automatically pick up will then automatically be populated. Joan can then continue with filling out her document. And from there, Joan can then sign her document. Now for this, I'm using a mobile QR code. So I'm just quickly scanning that on my phone. And I'm saving Joan's signature. There we go. And I can then sign the document. Now, while the document is signing, it is actually being encrypted with um, long-term validation time and time stamping. Um, and it's also just digitally sealing up the document so that you can't actually make any new changes on the body or the, the information on this document. While we wait for Joan, I'm just going to reshare my previous screen just to show you what it then looks like. You can find the correct screen here. There we go. Okay, so with the screen back onto the document originator's profile, if I refresh the screen, you'll see that this document's actually moved on from Joan to Benny. <clears throat> now we can also see here that Joan has signed on page one with this specific IP using this specific um, browser as well as a very specific location as well. Um, so he also gets to see the um, custom message. You can see what Joan has filled out, when Joan has signed, what type of certificates accompanies the signature, and once he is happy with the actions taken, so choose to sign. I'm just very quickly going to draw out the signature. And that would be the webinar for today. Is there any questions? Has there come any questions through, Lizzie?
Thank you, Danny. Uh, yes, so we do have a question. Um, first question, can I download this audit trail? Yes, so you can actually download the audit trail. I will show you guys where to go now. Um, so from the completed basket, you do have the option of clicking on this button over here, which it does meet you with a pop-up that says view document history. If you do click on it, it's gonna generate a, a fairly in-depth audit trail for you. And then you also will have the choice between actually downloading the audit only or the combined audit trail. So this will be the audit trail with the documents. Okay, thank you so much. I hope that answers your question. All right, then we've got another question. How do you bulk sign documents? I saw this was mentioned as a hashtag to Tuesday. Fantastic. So bulk signing documents is fairly simple. We just need to keep in mind when bulk signing documents. Um, it can only be documents that have set user info fields on, initial fields, as well as signature fields. Um, and all you have to do is go to bulk signing the documents that display that meet the criteria of bulk signing documents will display here. You wanna preview the documents before you sign them. You can simply click on this little green plus over here, which will pop out a preview of the documents that you're actually signing. So you can read through the documents. And then once you're happy with the document contents, simply just select the documents that you'd like to bulk sign and click on sign check documents. Okay, perfect. So definitely a time saver. <laughs> definitely a time saver. Perfect. Thank you, Danny. I hope that answered the question. Then I see we've got another one. I saw a hashtag tip Tuesday talking about editing a workflow. How does that work? That's correct. So you can actually change the signers to your workflows from your circulating basket. So for instance, if someone is currently unavailable to sign the document, so let's say Joan is on leave and we need this thing urgently signed, we can always click on edit flow. From edit flow, you can then edit your signers. Now, in this case, this is a face-to-face -face workflow. So I'll just edit the witness. Um, and thing is, it's not gonna be Joan anymore, but rather maybe Benny. You can then select that person's detail click on confirm and then save changes. What's really cool about this functionality is how it displays in the order trail. So it will actually tell you that Joan has been replaced by Ben. Okay, perfect. So that is definitely a good thing. If someone is, for example, on leave and you would need to move it to another manager, for example, or anything like that. 100% correct. Okay, perfect. Well, I hope that answered our attendees question. Okay, it looks like we've covered all of our questions. Danny, is there anything else you wanted to cover before we wrap up? No, I think we're good for now. Thank you, everyone, for joining today's webinar. It was a pleasure being with you guys today. All right. Thank you, everyone. We appreciate you being here. Keep an eye on our Sydney Flow events page for all of our upcoming hashtag webinar Wednesdays. And if you still have any questions or if anything comes up that you would like clarity on, please contact us at this email address, questions at sydneyflow.com. We're always keen to help our customers get the most out of Sydney Flow.